Thank you so much for joining us today. We would love to hear how God is using this church to impact your life. Please send us your story to info at championschurch.org.uk. We hope that today's message will encourage and inspire you. Wonderful. Well, love you uh, folks this morning, family, friends, everyone here. It's wonderful to see you in church. And uh, is it okay if we just take a few moments to celebrate the goodness of Jesus this morning? I don't know where you're at in your life. We're all in different points. We're all at different walks, uh, different levels in our spiritual walk, in our earthly walk. We're at different ages and different stages. We're different sizes, shapes. But you know, it's a wonderful family. I wouldn't be anywhere else in the world. And I want you to know our heart, mine, and Jillian our family goes out to you this morning with a, a great, grateful heart for all that God is doing. When I look around this place at all your wonderful faces, I'm moved uh, to tears often as I think about the goodness of God here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Well, today I want to bring a message, obviously, for the last Sunday together. And I, I really pray it will impact you. You know, I, I understand that I, I can't impact you in, in one sense. Uh, my words are just going to fall uh, empty. So I want you to know I've been praying and believing that God would use my mouth, that he would use my lips, he would use my spirit and my heart, he would use my intellect, and he would use my God-given ability that he has given so that I could communicate with you effectively today. I'm going back to go forward, and I never forget it's been over 45 years ago now since I sat in the lounge in my parents' home, and I don't know where everybody else was, but I do know I was sitting with my mom. It was Christmas. We were sitting in the two armchairs that we had in our lounge. We only had two armchairs, even though there was five of us in the family. You know, my mom and dad sit near the fire in the two armchairs. I'm not sure what the message that sent out to us as kids, but I think it was something like, you're on the back row. Whenever he watched TV, which there was only three channels, of course, at that time, uh, we had to get the uh, dining room chairs and we had to sit on the back uh, while they sat in their armchairs. Uh, I, I'm kind of overstating that because it's really messed up my life in, 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 in many ways. Uh, but um, uh, there we go. And on this occasion, I don't know where my dad was, my brother and my sister, but I, I'm sure that it was just myself and my mom. And we sat watching a television program. It was a, it was a movie of those days. And it was based on the Charles Dickens novel from 1946. It wasn't 1946 when I was watching it, just to clarify that. I wasn't even born then. But it was called Great Expectations. Anybody seen that film? It's a dark, it's a dark film. It's a scary film. And I have to say, 45 years later, I can still recall the day I watched it in my mind. And so today, I don't want to scare you. I, I, I don't want it to be a dark time. I want it to be a light time. But there's a part of me that does want today to be pretty scary. Because stepping out into a new year can be scary. And I want you to grab a hold of, do it scared anyway. If you're going to do it, do it scared. And some of you like to feel, well, you know, I, I'm too afraid to step out. So my message to you today is called Great Expectations. I believe that everybody in this church today should have great expectations for the year that's coming. You say, Pastor Mark, no way. My year has just gone from bad to worse to incredibly terrible. There's no way that another year is going to make any difference. Is it okay if I give you some clues this morning to how your year is going to be? You see, we know that resolutions don't work. We've just accomplished one year. 
12 months, 365 days, 8,760 8, hours, 525,600 minutes, 31,536 seconds. That's what you've just received as a gift. You're about to get 31,536 seconds as another gift at midnight tonight. It is an amazing gift. With this gift, you can never take it back. I can borrow you, lend you money and expect it back. I can give away my lawnmower and expect it back. I give away lots of books and never expect them back. Where are they? <laughs> I can give you everything I own. But one thing I cannot give you is time. You can only give it yourself. It is a gift from God. It's called time, T-I-M-E. You get hundreds of hours, and they're coming your way. But the problem is most of us really don't know what to do with them, so we just replay last year. We have pork on a Friday, uh, pork on a Tuesday, sausage, mash, and beans on a Wednesday, Fish on a Friday, take away if you're blessed on a Saturday, maybe a roast or a sandwich on a Sunday, and you go, oh, hey, that's the way we've always done it. I pray today that you will have far bigger expectations for your life. But watch this carefully. Saying Happy New Year, one of the great things of being older is that you can say things like this. I'm old enough now to say this. You can't mistake me anymore for a young whippersnapper. And what do you know? I'm now allowed to say, I'm old enough to say this now. And I found this over 56 years. Happy New Year makes no difference. You can say it at the end of the service, which we will, and we do it because that's what we do. It can make people smile. It can make people go, oh, yeah, warm and tingly inside. But the truth is, Happy New Year will not change anything for you next year. You can say it all you like, but it really doesn't change anything. Wanting to change your behavior doesn't change your behavior. If that were the case, you would have changed it earlier. Now, I do believe that wanting to change your behavior is a good thing. I do believe that we should want to change. But wanting to change doesn't change the way that we are. The other thing that doesn't change us is resolutions. Tim has already, already mentioned it. 92% of all new, rev, new, new Year's resolutions fail. 92%. So can we all save a lot of time tonight with the list that Tim was talking about? There's only 8% of you that are going to do anything any good this year by making a New Year's resolution. So what can change us? Relationship changes us. Do you have a teenage son at home? that yet rarely comes out of his bedroom, that never washes and combs his hair, let alone styles it? Do you have a teenage son or daughter that grunts when you say, how are you? Good morning, happy day. And they look at you as if you've gone out. D yes, <laughs> there's a lot of yeses. Do you have a teenager that rarely washes, that their bedroom, we won't mention it, it's just piles and piles of clothes. They have no reason to live. Do you have a teenager like that? Do you have a teenager that's ungrateful? Do you have a teenager that never comes from mealtimes? Do you have a teenager that you have to text in their bedroom to say your tea's ready and then they never respond by texting back? Do you have a teenager that is a grumpy old so-and-so? Now watch this. Have you noticed that teenager is now washing his hair? and smelling like a perfume store? <laughs> Have you noticed that that teenager now is dressing different 
Have you noticed that your teenager now is coming down for meals and eating salad? <laughs> Have you noticed that your teenager now is behaving in a different manner? You don't need to read his Facebook status to find out in a relationship. You see, relationship changes everything. Relationship changes your lifestyle. The style of your life is changed. The way you smell is changed by relationship. You comb your hair because of a relationship. You shower more because of a relationship. You actually smell nice because of a relationship. You iron your clothes. I never knew, you never knew there was an iron before. And now you're ironing your clothes. You're going out on time and you're becoming a nicer person. Because you have just entered into a relationship. You found that girl of your dreams. Relationship changes everything. Now, can I take that natural environment and apply it right now to our spiritual lives? You see, if you only come to church on a Sunday, you're religious. Hello. If you ask on a Saturday... Shall we go to church? That's like having fish on a Friday and bangers and mash on a Wednesday. It's religion. You say to each other, oh, I don't know. We've been a bit busy. I don't know whether we should go next week, Vision Sunday. Pastor Mark is probably going to ask us for more money for yet another building. No, we won't go. You see, attending church is religious. Like you go anywhere else. It can become a religious ritual. It will not change you. It may help you to sing. It may help you to be more generous. It may find the girl and the boyfriend of your dreams because we have so many good-looking folks here. It may do a lot of things, but one thing it will not do is change you. My lifestyle is live like it is, not because I go to church. My lifestyle is live like I do, not because I'm the pastor. My lifestyle is because I love Jesus. Yeah. Bottom line, it's called relationship. And before I get into this message this morning that's going to be quick fire and we're going to hit, hit everybody between the eyes in a few moments, I just felt I needed to say this today. You see, you can go, I've been going to church now for six months, six years, and I've not really changed. You see, that's because all you're becoming is religious. It is when you come to Jesus in relationship with Him. My life has changed not because of church, but because of Him. So today, is it, is it okay if I draw you in? I love the words of this psalm here. It is so simple, Psalm 42.1. It says this, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. You have to pursue God this year, this next year. Don't just decide to come to church on a Sunday. Make a decision to be in relationship with God. This service would completely fail if people were not connecting with God here and now. Connect with Him today. Right here, right now. The last thing you do in 2018, 2017, I knew I was going to get my years mixed up this, this morning. Connect with Almighty God. Connect with Him through Jesus. Make a decision now. I will no longer just be Sunday, a Sunday Christian. I'm going to be a real Christian. I'm going to walk with Jesus. Some of my mates, and I, I still meet some of them from school days. I was with one just about three weeks ago. Their lives are all out of control. Forty-something years ago, when I said yes to Jesus, I'm sure my mates said, ah, it's never going to last. Forty-five years later, 
It's just getting stronger. And I'm not religious. If I really want to play with people's heads when they say, oh, I don't come to church because I'm not religious. And I go, no, neither am I. They go, how can you not be religious? You're the pastor of the blooming church. So it's pretty simple. Religion says do. Relationship says done. Jesus has already done it for you this morning. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus, shall we? So make sure you know that nothing's going to change you, but relationship will change you this morning. Well, I'm going back to a familiar passage today, Acts chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1. Many of you are going to immediately know this passage, and I intentionally wanted you to be familiar with it so that I could pull out something that is not going to baffle you, but I just want to keep it so, so simple for this New Year's Eve church celebration. Are you ready? Acts chapter 3, verse 1. If you're reading it on your iPad, your iPhone, or read it on the screen, here we go. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. Three in the afternoon, they were there, and now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple called Gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I don't have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with him into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him and walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. It is this phrase that I want to leave with you and I really pray like when I watched that old film, Great Expectations, it got in my head. And I pray that this will get in your head today. You see, in church, we are famous for preaching to people's hearts. Yet the Bible says, love God with all of your heart, your soul, which is the word psyche with all your mind and your strength. It's very uncommon to hear anybody in a church preach to the mind or the psyche, the soul. Your soul is your will, your intellect, your emotions. And so I want you to permit me today to address your mind and your will more than your heart, because your heart is what you're familiar with in church. Oh, yeah, love Jesus with all your heart. Oh, I give your heart to Jesus. Well, I'm going to get inside your head this morning. Great expectations 45 years ago got so in my head that I could still relive that day as a boy sitting in the lounge with my mom. I can still replay the scenes of the cobwebs and the wedding dress. And for those of you who want to watch it, it was remade in 2012, I think. So this afternoon, you've got your viewing ready for you. Let's go to one expression. And it says that this man, the crippled beggar sitting outside the gate called Beautiful, it says... The man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Expecting to get something from them. As we sit on the outside of a brand new year, that I am going to call a beautiful year, because that's what every day can be for you. It will be, yes, filled with ups and downs. Nobody guarantees tomorrow. Nobody guarantees it's going to be all plain sailing. 
I can guarantee that I'm going to get some storms and you're going to get some too because we're called human beings. We're not robots. But as we sit on this penultimate day of this year, we are seated each of us outside of a brand new chapter, a, a clean sheet of paper, And I want us to grab a hold of this message title, Great Expectations. And I want to say to your head, as much as I want to say to your emotion, and I want to say to your heart, I want to say to you this, expect something. This guy had been taken there every single day of his life. Nothing was new. Yet on this day, he saw somebody Two guys that he recognized as Jesus people, and he looked at them, for they said, hey, mate, we don't have any money. We're spent out. We're building a new children's facility. Come on, everybody. And we're going to church. That's routine. Now, some of you need to get disciplined in 2018. Don't give me this the, the, this kind of stuff that said, oh, you know, they just swanned around in the Bible. He said, no, they went to prayer three in the afternoon every day. Some of you need to get discipline in prayer. I get tired sometimes of people, the same old people, and I, and I love the same people that come, but I, I, I really constantly pray that 2018, you'll grab, a, you'll grab a vision for your life that every time we gather to prayer as men and women and church and kids, that, that you'll grab a vision for your life and say, hey, this is not an option. I should be there. Peter and John didn't say, oh, I think we just swan around today. They're on their way to a disciplined life. That was a freebie. And here they are. And they say, we don't have anything to give you, but what we have, We're going to give you. Look at us. If we fast forward that to this platform today with great humility of heart, I want to say something to you. Could it be that God could use me as a Peter or a John and I'm not making myself out to be anywhere close to them at all? You understand that? But could it be in this day in history that we together are looking at a platform, listening to a human being that is actually standing there saying, look this way. I've got the microphone. I'm the one doing the speaking right now. Look this way. Because I'm about to give you something that humanly, it seems impossible, but with God, it is possible right now. And he gave them his attention expecting to get something from them. The danger we face in our church, in our lives, in the black country area, where there are 1.2 million people, only about 3% church attendance at the most, the danger we face is what I call the danger of low expectation. We rarely expect this year coming to be anything different from last year. Oh, it's a brand new year. It's a different date. Doing different things. But sooner or later, you are going to recognize 2018 to be the same as what you've just lived. It's just a complete repeat. You're probably going to go to the same holiday, in the same place, in the same cottage, in the same car, in the same, and you're going to go, oh, I love it back here. It's called nostalgia. And if you're not careful, emotion and nostalgia can live your life for you because you want to play it safe. This guy said, I've blooming had enough. I don't want to sit here anymore. All these folks keep walking through this gate to a beautiful life, and all I keep doing is sitting here. So they said, look at us. And he said, okay, listen carefully, expecting to get something from them. I pray right now that you will expect to get something from this message right now. Right here, right now. Now notice 
two or three things about this passage that maybe we've seen before or never before. Peter and John never actually prayed for the guy. They didn't. Like we call prayer. They didn't have a time of prayer. They didn't say, bow your head. Crippled beggar, bow your head. Let's have a little prayer. Let's see what Jesus wants to do. They didn't have a prayer. If you read it carefully, they didn't talk to God about the guy either. They didn't say uh, to each other, Pete, John, come on, let's just have a little holy huddle. Let's ask God if it's his will, if he would like to do something with this guy. They didn't talk to God about the beggar. In fact, they didn't do very much at all in one sense. Apart from this, they spoke to his condition. That's all they did. Now, yes, they spoke with the authority that was in them, but I speak to you today with the authority of Jesus within me as I've walked with him all these years, and I say the very same thing. I am not going to pray for you. I'm not going to talk to God about you. But what I am going to do is I am, as I speak, impart something to you that is going to actually help you to get back on your feet and walk through a beautiful gate into a brand new year, 2018. Now watch this. They said, get up. And nothing happened. You say it did. Well, yes, it did in a moment. But it actually didn't happen there and then. It says, they said to him, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And then there's a pause. And you can miss this so easily. And then it says, and taking him by the hand, they helped him up. In other words, the miracle did not happen until they took him by the hand and helped his ankles that had never worked before and they helped him onto his feet. This message, friends, addresses your condition and it doesn't pray for you. It doesn't talk to God about you. It doesn't do anything apart from says, here is a helping hand to get you up from your condition into that gate called beautiful. Is there anybody here today over this side that would love to take a hand that says, come on, will you stand up? Will you, here, would you stand up over here? Would you stand up with a little bit of help today so that we can help to make your ankles strong and that you can walk into a brand new, beautiful life? This guy, oh yeah, come on somebody, right now. Because what I'm doing here today is very spiritual. Because what I'm doing is offering you a hand. And it's not a hand out, it's a hand up. And I'm asking you, would you right now like to walk with me, said Peter and John. Because the miracle is in you getting up. The miracle is in the hand up. The miracle is in, I'm taking you by the hand. Sit down, everybody. I thought you were going to stay standing now for the next five minutes, and you, you did as well. I think you were standing because you wanted, hey, let's finish this service. Just stand up, and you'll make it. You'll finish it. Hey, it's New Year's Eve. Some of you are going to be parting to one or two in the morning, and if you can't sit still in church for half an hour, then, well, we don't have much hope, do we? You see, like the beggar, you and I can have routines. We like our routines. If there's anything that messes with me during any kind of holiday, it's the lack of routine. How many moms and dads, for that matter, here in the six-week holiday are craving, please give me routine. Get the flipping kids back to school. Give me my routine. I want to do the washing on a Monday, and I want to do the garden, and I want to... And the kids have messed up the routine. So we all have routines. But dare I say to you today that God wants to mess up your routine. 
The guy, every single day, had the routine, come, sit, go. He had little options. But on this day, he said, hey, I'm expecting. I want you above everything else in your head right now to say, I'm expecting. I'm expecting this is going to be the greatest year of my life to date. The terrible thing about, the terrible thing about sitting outside of something is that you watch everybody else going into that something. And you start to get crabby. You become a crabby babby. You start to get resentful of people's blessings. Uh, and you start to have one on you. Oh, look at them. They think they're better than everybody else. No, they don't. They just chose to get up and walk through the gate called beautiful. The problem is that we sit there judging those who are blessed. When you yourself needs to have a hand up today, and I'm giving you one, and if you choose to cross your arms and look like, I mean, some of you have been so unhappy over Christmas, and even through the whole of 2017, if you went back home and dared to smile, you'd scare the kids. That's the demeanor that we have. Oh, nothing's good's going to come my way. Generally in life, you get what you expect. I would dare to believe that there are people here today who are going, uh, I'll never trust another leader because the last time I trusted a leader, they did that. Well, we're all human. We're all bound to fail. But you can't live your life like that. It's time to trust again. Oh, I'm never going to trust another man. Yeah, just because the last two messed up with your life. What about trusting again? What about some of you go, you know, oh, we'll never move house. Well, you get what you expect. There's power in your confession. Oh, we're always going to be stuck with this old crummy car that keeps breaking down. Well, you said it. What about this year saying, hey, I am expecting to receive something. I am expecting that God is going to bless me. I'm expecting that I'm going to walk into a beautiful life. Get out of your routine. God wants to mess with your head this year and take you into this beautiful life. Surely the whole purpose of faith is to get you into a whole new level of expectation. Let's talk about here, shall we? You see, maybe you've been disappointed. I don't really mean here, the building. I mean you. Maybe you've been disappointed. Maybe you believe God and it didn't turn out right. Maybe you expected a miracle and the person died. Maybe you've really, really said, you, you, you've confessed it and it all went wrong. And right now you're going, Mark, I'm just going to opt for an easy life. I'm not going to expect anything anymore. Because you refuse to be disappointed. Can you imagine what would have happened if we would have said through the 17 years of waiting for this building, I'm never going to trust again because it's never going to happen. Can you picture in your mind where we would still be? I can. It's called the chapel. Can you, with your mind right now, imagine what I call those glorified caravans out there for our kids? Can you imagine if we'd have given up at the first hurdle? Or even as early, as late as, whichever way, as June this year when we when we spoke and we said, hey, and Mark opened his big mouth again. And June, we're going to be building in June. And June came and went. But just because June came and went, and just because year 15 came and went, and 16, you have to learn to keep believing. And I want to say to everyone with all the love in my heart, as I address your mind, be strong in mind. Be strong this morning. 
get up again and believe for the best. Mark eleven twenty four, I believe it is. Whatsoever things you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. We've walked inside the kids' facility many times and it's not even built. I've been walking around with a million pounds in my pocket for at least the last six years and I've never held I've never held a million. You say, why didn't you give it away? Because it wasn't real. You know what I'm saying. I believed I'd received it. And therefore we can build with it. And some of you have got so low on expectation. The 2018, oh, I'm dreading it, dreading it. Can I lift you by the hand right now? Would you like to stand with me this morning? There's a beautiful life, and you're sitting right outside of it. And the only decision you need to make this morning is to make the decision to receive this word, to lift you up and say, hey, mate, we don't even know his name. Would you come with us? That's the moment. That's the moment. Don't just keep watching other people walk through the beautiful life. I can hear some of you saying it now. Oh, I hate that woman over there. She's always happy. Drives me, drives me mad. Always high. Always on a high. Drives me mad. Do you know what that is? The language of people who won't walk through the gate. Come with me today. Now listen, if I choose, which I do right now, to walk through this gate this year, next year, I'm going to tell you this. I am going to take with both hands everything that God has for my life. Now if you choose to get annoyed with me about that, that ain't my problem. But I'm going to grasp with both hands. In fact, every time I come to church, I'm going to be leaping and dancing and praising God because of the beautiful life that God wants to give to me and to you. But stop judging and looking down your nose at people who keep passing you by just because you're too blooming idle to get off your feet, onto your feet, and start walking through yourself. Would you make a decision in your head right now, even if you don't make it in your heart? Would you make a decision with all your psyche, your emotion, your will, your intellect to say 2018 is going to be that year for me? I'm going through. I'm going through right now. In fact, let's say this phrase together. Go through your gate in 2018. I think that was a brilliant phrase. It is so corny. I can't believe I said it. Let's say it again. Go through your gate in 21.8. Come on, let's say it again. Go through your gate in 21.8. Jesus said, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, Matthew, Mark, Mark 11, 22, Go throw yourself, say to a mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what they say will happen. It will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. Come on, let's give some glory to God this morning, shall we? Are you ready to start to worship in a few moments time? Are you ready? Are you ready to see the new year in a little early today? Are we ready to walk together with Peter and John and the crippled beggar? Are we ready to walk into a beautiful life? Are you ready to let go of your inhibitions? Are you ready to let go of your low expectations? Are you ready to let go of your crippled life? And are you ready to receive this word today that says, Come on, rise up in Jesus' name. 
rise up in Jesus' name. Now, some of you are decorating your gate. I remember one day, a few years ago, Gillian, well, many years ago, that we had a, a gold tin of paint in our house. And Gillian says there's one or two little things in our house. Don't, don't think we have a lot of gold in our house, but it's just gold paint. And I think it was the bedroom wardrobes. They got some little fancy pieces on and the gold had come off. And so she said, I'm going to get a, a little gold tin of paint and a tiny little paintbrush. And she went out for the day. And I was left to touch up the gold paint. Do you remember, Jillian, you came back and you said, what on earth have you done? Do you know, once I started, I just couldn't, <laughs> I just couldn't stop. I, 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 a little touch here, and then I went, oh, wow. I did a bit, bit more here. Then I went down to the kitchen, did a few bits in the kitchen. Everywhere in our house, she, there's always a standing joke, Jillian, in our house. So don't give him any gold paint. Some of you are decorating the gate from the wrong side. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice if we went through there? Some of you keep washing your mat on the wrong side. Oh, you know, straighten the mat. Put it through the washer again. Let's just pat it out nicely. All of those are nice, but God did not design your life today just to be on the wrong side of a beautiful life. Come on, everybody. Let's go through into a beautiful life. Come on, let's thank Jesus, shall we? Here we go. Thanks for listening to this week's message from Champions Church. We hope you'll stay connected by following us online. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook.